At $145 per person, Epicurean is the most expensive buffet in Sydney. Is it going to be epic? I'm really curious. Or should I say, I'm very Epicurious. All right, let's go and check it out. The Epicurean Buffet is famous for its fresh seafood, including oysters, prawns, Morton Bay bug, Alaskan king crab and lobster. They also have your smoked salmon and kingfish, scallop ceviche, as well as some salad toppings of your choice. Here you've also got cold dishes like, you know, pasta and dips and some veggies. You can also get your carb fix here at the bakery section, with freshly baked breads and cured meats. Moving on to my favourite Japanese station, you can get a selection of raw fish such as salmon, tuna, kingfish, as well as enjoy a variety of sushis and nigiris. Now entering the hot food section, we have a variety of cooked seafood, delicious roast meats, stews, veggies and bakes. They also have an Italian station where you can get freshly made pizza and creamy pasta. There is also a dedicated Asian station where you can get your typical fried rice, noodles and Asian stir fries. There is dim sum but you can dim all, haha. <laughs> as well as Chinese barbecue meats like crispy roast pork, roast duck and cha siu. Moreover, you can get DIY noodle soup where you can choose your toppings and they'll cook it in some nice broth for you. Last but not least, for those of you with a sweet tooth <laughs> like me, this is Dessert Heaven. They have over 20 selections of mouth-watering pastries, cakes and tarts. You can also get ice cream here. Can't believe there's even a chocolate fountain and some cute macarons. Oh my gosh, I felt like a kid at the candy store. All right guys, I am so ready to dig in. The first part of food I got is going to be the seafood because I just want to eat as much seafood as I can. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to try here is apparently is a scallop ceviche. They've cut up the scallop into pieces for some reason and there's some like vinaigrette sauce on it. A bit more on the bland side. I heard a lot of good things about the oysters here and I came here for the oysters. I got half a dozen to start off with, but I'm hoping I can reach to like maybe 30. I've never had 30 oysters. Cheers. That just melted in my mouth. It's not as briny and seafoody as I thought it'd be. Next up, I'm gonna try the lobster. It's a very pretty meaty piece of lobster that they gave me. Do you see that? Wow. Cheers. Yep. The texture is a bit tough and rubbery. <laughs> very meaty though. Next up, I'm gonna try the Morton Bay bug. Good flavor. It's more salty and the meat is less chewy and rubbery than the lobster. Okay, so moving on to the Alaskan king crab. I'm super excited, it's my first time trying it and like look how spiky that is. I couldn't even get it out <laughs> like, and then I realized they have tools here. So I got myself some tools to get the crab out. Yeah. Mm, super sweet. It's very fresh and it's not rubbery or have a weird texture at all, unlike the lobster. Looking back at what I ordered for the seafood section, I'd highly recommend the oysters and the Alaskan king crab. First stuff I got is sashimi. So I got salmon sashimi, tuna sashimi, kingfish, a raw scallop nigiri and a salmon nigiri as well. What I really like is that during this whole COVID situation, I hand drew the food to you directly instead of you having to pick it yourself. So it's just more hygienic. My favorite is salmon sashimi, so I'm just gonna go for it. Here we go, first bite. That is super buttery. It melts my mouth. Very fresh, actually. Next, I'm going to try the tuna. I'm not the biggest fan of tuna. I wonder if it's going to be fatty. Let's give it a go. Mm. The wasabi here 
It's pretty strong, guys. It wasn't super fatty tuna, obviously, but it was like really nice. It wasn't too... Usually tuna has this taste I don't really like, but this one was pretty nice. Time to try the kingfish. I like how they... Um, it's very thickly cut. Mmm, that is so good. Really big, thick bite of fish, and it's not chewy, no fishiness, very, very fresh. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna try the scallop nigiri next. Looks really good. The rice to seafood ratio, there's quite a bit of rice, actually, a bit more than I would like. I've been missing sushi since sushi eat. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out that video linked above. Garlic tastes so fresh and sweet. You know when seafood is so fresh that it tastes the sweetness? That was what it was. The seasoning in the rice is pretty good as well. You can taste the vinegar, the sweetness coming through the rice. But I think they could just cut down a little bit on the rice. Alright guys, I'm here now, finally about to eat. Um, it took a while to get our food. There's such a big variety and selection, so it took a lot of thinking to see what I wanted to start with first. Here I've got the prime rib. That looks perfect. It looks really nicely cooked. Nice and pink in the middle. Let's try it. Mm. It's nice and tender and juicy. It's got a good crust on the outside as well. It's got a nice hard outside to give it that smokiness. Next up, I'm gonna try the complete duck leg. It looks cooked to perfection. Look at that. Doesn't that look glistening and so juicy? Mm. I personally like the duck a lot better than the prime rib. It's fattier, so it has a lot more flavor in it. The skin has a really nice coating of seasoning on it. It's a bit sweet, a bit smoky, a bit peppery. Try this ravioli. I think it's got artichoke and spinach. It's got a nice cheese in there that gives it a creaminess. It goes really well with the spinach or the vegetable in there. Now I'm going to try the Morton Bay Bug. It's cooked, I think, with a layer of cheese grilled on top of it. For those of you that don't know, um, Morton Bay Bug is kind of like a big prawn or a small lobster here in Australia. There it is. It's not the most appetizing on the fork, but it smells delicious. Mm. The texture is a bit different from lobster in that it's less chewy, less rubbery. It's more like a prawn than a lobster, coated with creamy cheese, and it's very herby. Really nice. So far, everything has been super delicious. Very happy. Can't wait to try everything in here. There's like such a big selection compared to all the other buffets we've been to in Sydney, where it feels like either they don't have a big variety and a very limited selection, or the quality is not that great. But the quality here so far has been like top notch. Everything's been fresh and delicious. All right, just got my third plate of food. I'm going strong, I think. I got some Chinese dim sum. Got some hagao here. Looks like a standard hagao. Mm. The skin has that elasticity and bounciness to it. Is that the best haga I've had? No, but is it good? Yeah, it's pretty good. Now I'm gonna try the shumai. It's packed full of meat. It's juicy, it's not stale like the ones you get in the frozen mart. Tastes pretty good overall, actually. So they also have something that's really dear to my heart. It's these um, pork ribs. Mm, it smells so good. It reminds me of the ones I get at Yum Shop. It's not like the most fall off the bone meat, it's like still got a bit of chew to it. These are oily though. I also got a custard bun. See what it looks like inside. Wow. Not bad. I think the custard is not as sweet and creamy and fragrant as the ones that I'm used to from Yum Cha, but overall not bad. Okay, so I'm moving on now. Um, I saw that in the Chinese section they have Peking duck. From what I can see, they do give generous amounts of duck. But from my knowledge, I think traditional Peking duck, you only have like the skin part of the duck, not the extra meat. And they give you hoisin sauce as well, cucumbers and also spring onions. The dough feels kind of thick, actually. It's kind of like almost like a crepe. Mm. The skin is on the thicker side though. It's almost like a pancake, like a thick pancake. The duck is not the softest. Goes well with the heaps of poisons also that are loaded in there, but it is a bit dense, so got some silla or like Chinese barbecue. Um, they had crispy pork. The skin looks crispy and charred. The meat looks fatty, good ratio of meat and fat. Mm. That crispy pork has really crispy skin. Now this char siu looks kind of dead. Looks really dry actually. Let's give it a go. 
It's not as dry as it looks actually. The flavor is good of the char siu, but the texture is a bit too hard and dry for me. There's also soy sauce chicken, but like, once again, it's kind of dry. So that soy sauce chicken is too dry. Don't get it. Now I'm going to move on to my next plate of seafood. I'm going to go devour this off camera. But look at that gigantic plate of food I just got. All right, being an Asian, I gotta try the Asian food here and tell you guys whether it's worth trying or not. Firstly, I'll try the fried rice. Like, fried rice is such an important dish, right? Like, it's such a basic dish. If you can't get that right, then everything else I'm skeptical about. It's got, I think, flakes of like sausage, Chinese sausage, prawns, peas and carrots. Oh, my. That's a good fried rice. The rice is nice and soft and sticky. It's a little bit sweet. I don't really taste the MSG in there, so. Obviously, it's not going to be the same as those Chinese takeaway shops. Next up, I'm going to try the, I think it's called the orange beef. I've never actually had orange beef before. So it looks like it's been deep fried and coated in sesame. It's a bit strange tasting beef that's a bit sour. Um, usually, it's, you know, nice and salty or even a little bit sweet. But nothing that's sour. It's had a nice crunch from the fried exterior. And inside is nice and tender. Not, not a bad dish. I'll also just try my favorite, another favorite of mine, which is the bean curd roll. So usually it's got meat stuffing inside. I'm not sure about this one, but usually, yeah, it's got meat, bamboo. Mm. I think this is mostly vegetarian. It's got a lot of vegetables in there. I can taste a strong bamboo the tofu taste, but not much meat in there. All right, now I'll move on to some Indian food. We were actually craving Indian food last night, so I gotta try it right now, Isa. Over here, I've got the chicken tikka masala. Here's the chicken. It looks so juicy and tender. Wow. That's delicious. Such good flavor. So creamy. A little bit spicy as well, like a hint of spice. But just right. Gotta have some rice to go with that sauce. Who else loves rice and curry? It's just such a good combo. And while I'm at it, might as well have some of my garlic naan as well. Hmm. The naan could be better though. It's a bit dry. It's not really like a pull apart chewy naan. It's more like a flaky Lebanese bread type of naan. I'm not a big fan of it. Probably the only thing so far that I didn't really like. Can't get every single dish right, right? I've also got some paneer over here, paneer curry, I believe from what I understand. Correct me if I'm wrong, this is a Indian cheese um, and it's really cool because I've never had Indian cheese before and never had cheese curry. So this is kind of like a tofu to me, which is really cool. I love tofu, so let's see. Texture is a lot like tofu and feta in that it crumbles apart when you chew it, but it's not nearly as sour or as strong or pungent as feta. So it acts as a great vehicle to carry all that delicious curry into your mouth. Wow. That's delicious. All right, guys, I'm back with dessert. I just had so much food. I've had so much seafood and meat, and I'm honestly in a bit of a food coma right now, but must still go on because I've always got extra stomach space for dessert. You know how in fine dining restaurants, you get like petite balls at the end? Well, guess what? I've got like petite tens or something here. I literally grabbed almost all the desserts here, so really excited. And we also got um, coffee, so I got a cappuccino as well. I love desserts with coffee. So the first thing I'm going to go for is the tiramisu. At the top I think there's mascarpone and at the bottom it's like coffee soaked ladyfingers. Mm, that cream on top is so good. I would have liked a bit more like coffee flavor. It's still really good. Mm. Next one I'm going to move on to this cheesecake apparently. It looks deconstructed. I don't know why it's a flower. It's so cute and pretty. Oh my god. Very creamy and sweet. I think it lacks that extra citrus element to a cheesecake that I really love. Overall, not bad, but I prefer like a normal cheesecake. I also got the Eton or Eton mess. Um, I think there's like berry, tuli or sauce, um, strawberries, raspberry, blueberry, and a meringue. I don't really like meringues though, but I'll give this a shot. Mm. I really like the berry sauce. It has this tartness to it. But the meringue, I can taste like the sugar dissolving my mouth. So I'm not the biggest fan of meringue, but if you like it, this is pretty good. All right, I also got these tarts. I think it's like a chocolate hazelnut tart. I'm not sure. I think there's pistachios on the top. That tart shell looks perfect. It looks so pretty and thin. It reminds me of these fine dining tarts you get. 
So let me try it. Mmm. I think that was salted chocolate, hazelnut, pistachio, tart. Really nice. Now I'm gonna try the chocolate yuzu mango tart. I love yuzu and I love mango, so I'm hoping to have a bit of more citrusy elements in this tart. One bite of it. Don't really like this one. Too much chocolate flavor. Can't taste the yuzu. Can't taste the mango. I also got this cute macaron. I think it's is it raspberry or revolver? I forgot to check the, the tag, but I was like, give me all your macarons. So they have this one and the passion fruit one, which Hong is happy. But how cute is the presentation? Not bad. I think it's raspberry. It's okay. It's a macaron shell. It doesn't have that nice chew that you usually get. Like, not chew, but you know that texture that almond flour gives you? I think the flavor is a bit mild. Moving on to, I think this is the passion fruit macaron. That passion fruit does come through. I can taste the tartness. I definitely prefer the passion fruit macaron over the raspberry one. I think my favorite dessert would have been tiramisu and the passion fruit macaron. At so many like buffets I've been to, the dessert has been horrible. This place has really good desserts. I've got my ice long black here just to help cut through the heaviness of the dessert. This blueberry pea jelly cup thing looks really, really cute, really cool. It's got like jelly in there with I think like tapioca balls or something I think it's got more pearls within the jelly so it's kind of like a blueberry flavored jelly with fresh blueberries inside it's kind of like a Chinese jelly if you guys have had it but it's really cool mm. Over here, I've got a brownie marshmallow combo dipped in dark chocolate um, fondue. So, here we go. Mm. This one's fun. You get to dip the marshmallow and the brownie in the chocolate syrup. But taste-wise, it's pretty average. It's kind of what you expect. Nothing special about it. Overall, I think it's a really expensive buffet here, but it's actually the best that I've been to in Sydney. So overall, I'd say like it's pretty, it's pretty good. Is it worth the money? It's questionable because $145 you can buy like a three course meal in fine dining. So probably not worth $145, but for the variety and the quality that you get, it's the best buffet I've been to in Sydney actually. And it's a really luxurious, beautiful decor buffet. So you definitely got to try it if you do come to Sydney. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to our channel for more food related videos in Sydney, and I'll see you guys in our next video.